<gasps> oh, darling, life, a bacchanal. Um, I mean, I, this is this to me is is it's like the 15th century and MTV all mixed together. I mean, I really can't describe it. You have to see it. It's it's, it's something that Baz Luhrmann has put. His concept of the play is not something that drowns the play. It illuminates the play. Because I've done classical theater before, and people get very conceptual at the risk of losing what the play's line is. But this, to me, illuminates the play in a way I have never seen it done. I'm so excited to be in it. I feel so privileged to be part of this company. Here's a woman with a lot of problems, with her own bad youth, her own, her own gods you know, of money and power. Marry money, you know, and life will be fine. Meanwhile, she has affairs here and there. She has an alcohol problems. She's, she's popping pills. She's smoking nonstop. She's filling in the emptiness that finally comes from those kinds of gods because the heart and the soul are not filled. That's why Romeo and Juliet, their love, is about the heart and the inner life, the soul life, where Lady Kecklewood has none. And the way Baz sees her is a way I've never, ever heard her played. It excited me. My character is so talkative and so, you know, like that there's no room for this child to speak. Like, I mean, it could be a Beverly Hills mom, you know. Gone to the club, gone here, gone there, gone there. And what do you think, darling? Okay, and, and move on. A child doesn't have, you know, let's just, you know, there's something in that that, that breaks the child's communication with the parent. She's asking questions and then leaving the room. Are we listening? No, we wonder why we have a problem.